What coping skills can you use to help you get up and take action? It's not the burdens of life that weighs you down, but instead it's how we handle them. So it's okay to fail forward. Now how you cope with this fear of failure is what's most important. This is what's going to help you stay persistent, most importantly in adversity, opposition, humiliation, retaliation, even the trauma of the past. These coping skills is what's needed to get up. Adversity is inevitable. You will be knocked down. You no longer have to dwell on the past. Why? Because you have coping skills to cope with the trauma, skills to cope with the mess from the past, learning to deal with stressful situations instead of letting fear paralyze you. These coping skills will help you manage the perception of self-doubt and fear. Understanding nothing but opportunity can come from failure. Another coping skill, lower your expectations. You may be asking yourself, where do I start? Ron, I don't know where to start. You're telling me I need coping skills, where do I start? Let me help you out, I'll give you a few. Coping skill number one, distance yourself from the source of stress. Now we talk, coping skills is what's gonna help you solve the problem, but you cannot operate in chaos. Coping skill number two, engage in problem solving. Understanding that these are the skills that's gonna help you not only cope with life, but setting healthy goals and healthy boundaries. And where these coping skills come into play is understanding that you have to distance yourself from the source of stress. So that takes discernment. Coping skill three, I just said it, discernment. And the saying is, you are who you hang around. Who are you hanging around? What decisions are you making? What choices are you making? Are, are they only benefiting you or your community? Coping skill three, ask others for help. We said there's nothing on earth living for self. The water doesn't drink itself and the flowers does not smell themselves. Another coping skill, challenge previously held beliefs. You don't have to see it to believe it. If you can believe it, you can see it. This is why you fighting right here. Listen kid, there's gonna be time in your life where people are gonna try to rain on your parade. They're gonna try to tell you what you can and what you can't do. But this is why you fighting. You fighting for them. You fight for all them nights you watched your mother sit on the edge of that bed and cry almost every night. Well, you and your brother, they couldn't do anything, and it hurt you, you remember? Listen, I don't want you to ever forget why you're doing what you're doing. You gotta understand, there's so much greatness that lives inside of you, and if you just get through this and continue to fight, there's greatness on the other side. And I understand that you may be in the dark today, but doesn't the beautiful roses of the field begin in the dark? What you gonna do? You gonna give up or you gonna keep going? What is it that stands behind that passion, purpose, desire that has you waking up every single day to go get what's yours? Because my faith is bigger than the size of a mustard seed. And whatever it is that stands behind that passion, purpose, and desire that has you waking up every single day, what is it? What is it that gives you unwavering conviction to go get what's yours? To do what you want to do? 
because there was a point in my time in my life where I didn't have a faith in myself, where I didn't believe in myself and I began to pick myself up, dust myself off so and I asked the question, what is it that continues to drive you, push you to continue to get up every single day after you've been knocked down? You've been here before. Is it your daughter at home? Is it your mama? Because as I reminisce and watch my mama sit on the edge of that bed and cry every single night. Are you back yet? Because whatever it is that does stand behind that passion, purpose, and desire that picks you up every single day, it better be strong again. I'm talking you will be knocked down. A storm is coming. You will be exposed to the elements. A tornado is coming. It's the faith that stands behind that purpose, passion, desire that got you getting up every single day after you've been knocked down today, yesterday. You may be knocked down tomorrow. And nothing going to change if nothing changed. So you have to take action. And when I say take action, you have to self-assess and say it is you versus you. When you can look in a mirror and you can say to yourself, I didn't study. I woke up late. When you can say it's me versus me. When you can get very comfortable being very uncomfortable, you begin to grow. You begin to grow and you don't go to pointing fingers at nobody. Man, I remember I was stripped of everything I owned from apartments to cars, everything I came in contact with. I mean, I was stripped of. But all through, through them storms, them trials and them tribulations, I began to soar like an eagle. See, the eagle. It's one of the only birds that when a storm is coming, he doesn't fly away, but he flies into the storm. And he uses the pressures of the storm to soar. We're using very little energy to soar above the storm to, to rise to an atmosphere of peace and security. Don't you want to soar? How would you use the storm to rise, to elevate. How would you use a storm to soar above everybody that told you you couldn't do what you're doing? And what drives you? Because it don't matter how hard you go when you're on a journey to go get what's yours, you will be knocked down. And I hope it's the faith that gives you the unwavering conviction, the courage, the dedication, what you sacrificing. Because being physically committed to the process without being emotionally attached to the outcomes is flying into the storm. And asking yourself, what can I extract from this storm to soar, to rise? to an atmosphere of peace and security. What do you do when people tell you you can't do it? Are the people who are attacking you adding purpose and value to your life? Are you caring too much? Studies show 30% of caregivers die before the person they're caring for, man. Are you caring too much? You putting your expectations on them and they not meeting your expectations. It's just going to kill you. 30% of caregivers die before those they caring for. You understand? So what I want you to do is self-assess. 
What are you scared of? About what people going to think? We all make mistakes and your identity does not lie in the mistakes you make. It is not the burdens of life that weighs us down, but it's how we handle them. And when adding value to anything, doesn't it come with mistakes anyway? It's a part of the process. And you gotta keep the faith and the hope alive. Because like I said, when you lose the faith and the hope, that's when you quit. And people only quit when they get deep and deep into pain and they can't take it anymore. You didn't come this far just to come this far. Have you picked yourself back up yet? I know you've been knocked down. I know time has been tough. I know it's been a rough year. But kid, listen. There's going to be times that people are going to talk about you. They're going to judge you. They're going to slander your name. And yeah, it may not be true, but you got to understand that through the football games, through the pain, through the pressure, through everything you go through, you must continue to believe in yourself. Do it for your mother. Do it for your father. Because there are going to be times where nobody believes in you, kid. And you got to understand, I've been through so much pain in my life growing up in the projects. Kid, I wasn't even raised with my father. When you talk about keeping the hope alive, you have to dig real deep. And taking it back, they gonna laugh, they gonna talk, so what? Let them hate. They just wanna be like you anyway. They thought I would never grow up to have a voice. They thought I wouldn't make it to play pro football. They thought I wouldn't pass the high school exam when I failed four times. How many times do they gotta doubt us before they understand that anything we put our minds to, we gonna go get. You can't give up on yourself. Humble yourself, man. His blessings is his blessings and your blessings is your blessings. Go get what's yours. Go get what's yours. Every day you should wake up with a chip on your shoulder. And this ain't really got nothing to do with you being better than nobody. This ain't got nothing to do with you being better than nobody. This about you being and doing better for your family, your friends. And most importantly, this is about you going out there into the world, impacting other people by sharing the good news, if you know what I mean. Man, look, look, young one, this one for you. You ain't gonna be happy every day of your life. And that's simply because your happiness is all based off your circumstances. But young one, if you can't be happy every day, that's okay. That's okay. Because Although you may not be happy today, you can still be full of joy every single day. Because like I say, happiness stands on your circumstances, but that joy, it stands on you being consciously aware that you walking in the Lord's presence, Sean. One. You cover. Or you want to put on this earth to live in misery, man. Everybody on earth walking around with a gift in their hand, man. I wish I would have unwrapped my gift long time ago. I wish I would have unwrapped my gift long time ago, man. But I was sitting there running in them streets. Young one, I was sitting there running in them streets. And the main reason I do this, the main reason I try to reach out and impact the world because I want to just get out to them young ones, man. And I just want you to know, you ain't got to live that no more because I did it. You ain't gotta live that no more because I did it. You talking about seven days of pressure? 
Do you know what seven days of pressure feel like? Do you know how it feel to sit behind the walls with your baby brother and do that bit and do that time with your baby brother? Come on, man. I been there, done that, young one. You ain't gotta live like that. I done it for you. I done been shot at. I done lived in straight misery. There was times, man, I sat in my apartment, man, I even thought about was life worth living, man. And I prevailed, man. So, don't tell me you can't do it cause I did it. We both built for this. Go attack what's yours, go get what's yours. His blessings is his blessings, and your blessings is your blessings. Go get what's yours, it's yours. Go get it. And when you get it, you better not let nobody take it from you. You better not let nobody take it from you. Get it and protect what's yours, young one. And when I say protect what's yours, protect your family, protect your gift, protect your values, protect your morals, protect your spirituality. Because most importantly, this is all about you going out into the world, impacting the youth, whether it's the youth, your young adults, the young women, the young kings and queens. It's about you getting out there and sharing the good news. I had to take the high school assessment test four times. I'm talking I had to take it four times. And I failed every single time. And when I say I mean I failed every single time, my grades got lower and lower and lower and lower. You must be don't understand how it felt. You must be don't understand how it felt to be that snotty nose boy out them projects, watching them grades get lower and lower. But I knew God had bigger plans for me. I knew God had bigger plans for me. I knew I wasn't put on earth to live in misery. You understand me? I was put on earth to prosper. I was put on earth to prevail. And that's all I'm here to do. But as them grades got lower and lower and lower, there was some college papers sitting on the table And we all know how happy that snotty nose boy projects get When them college papers sit on the table I felt like that was my way out Mama, if you listening to this, I love you I felt like that was my way out I ain't gonna let these grades get me down. I'm gonna go attack what's mine. I'm gonna go get what's mine. So I remember one day I got up, I say I got college papers on the table. I got in that library, I went to studying. I'm talking day and night. I'm talking restless nights. I went to go get my GED. It ain't nothing different, me and you, we built the same Don't tell me you can't do it, cause I did it And boy, I remember when those test grades came back You talking about one of the best feelings I ever felt in my life You talking about one of the biggest accomplishments you ever felt in your life I told you, God did not put you on this earth God did not put you on this earth to live in misery. And don't tell me you can't do it because I did it. 
Right now, I'm in pain. That's the saying, right? No pain, no gain, right? Man, I'm at war with failure every day just to obtain a little success. And you can't tell me that ain't pain. It hurt seeing your mama sit on the edge in that bed and cry almost every night. You can't tell me that ain't pain. It's not easy losing somebody that's close and dear to you. It's not easy jumping off the cliff and knowing that nobody will be able to catch you if you fall. It's not easy if you get knocked down eight times and you're scared to get back up on the ninth. If it's one thing I know, it's to be humble. Cause there's always areas in your life that's gonna need improvement and you're gonna need to do better. Humble yourself, young one. Don't settle, do more. You must look opposition in his face. You must face fear, you must face anxiety, you must face the day, because if you do not face the day, then the things that you are supposed to face, you start to become. That's why I don't ask God to make things easier. I ask him to equip me with the tools to overcome any obstacles, any barriers, in any way to ease the pain. Stand up! Put your chin up, what you gon' do? Every night, you should sit on the edge of that bed and ask yourself, what areas of my life have I improved in today?